What's happening? What's happening? Oh, another Thursday in the neighborhood. Another Thursday night looking good. All right. Let a few more folks get up on here and we'll get started with this here party. Gonna go over a little bit of the uh, PVL ignition tonight. Um, a lot of a lot of questions I get from time to time. A lot of questions I get with the PVL system. You know, on on how does it work? Why does it work? Uh, why you got to do things different? Um, I'm gonna go over that. Show you how to set it up. Um, you know, with the degree wheel, where the firing lines are on it, the different models that we make for the different engines that we make. We make quite a few uh, PVL flywheels. We make. A lot more than I realized we did. Um, I'm gonna go over some of those and different engines um, that they go for, but uh, let a few more folks get up here. Right, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? All right, all right. PBL ignition. Now the first thing I need to kind of uh, make aware for those of you that don't know when we say PBL ignition um, we're, we're talking about the PBL ignition coil that comes on the Briggs animal engine now this one does not have a spark plug wire in it I'm aware of that uh, this is a broken unit that's why I brought it um, but when, when, when I say PBL ignition this is what I'm talking about this is what it looks like this is a some folks call it a digital coal. I don't know how digital it really is. I just know that it it works a whole lot different than the stock OEM ignition um, that we get on these Predators and clones and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's a big, big plastic piece. It's got PBL ignition, you know, written on the side of it. This is made by the Briggs Company for the animal engine. Um, and as you can see, I do not have a standard coal in here. How about that? One second. Of all the parts that I've robbed and brought in here, I do not have a coal. Anyway, y'all know what a standard OEM clone coal looks like. I don't have to show you. Um, but these they've got three different versions of these coals um this is the most common one that's used on modified stuff you know outlaw open modifieds you know junior dragsters a lot of it's used in junior dragsters and carding because it's a a 12,000 rpm coal if you see there this this coal is is accurate in the way it fires up to 12,000 rpms and they've also got another coal, it's the red coal, which I do not have one with me. I believe it's red. I believe it's red. That's a 7100 RPM coal that comes on the, like the World Formula style engines and for spec racing. And then of course they got the green coal that comes on the, uh, the LO206 engines, which is an even smaller spec engine. Um, the green coal I believe is a 6100 RPM and the red coal is 7100 and of course this one's 12,000 which very no four cycle engines is going to operate in the 12,000 range for this coal but it's there if you need it now a lot of people get confused when we talk about pbl ignition because of the flywheel that dino cam sells um it's the pbl flywheel it's a it's a a, a casted billet style flywheel that's imported um, from Dino Cams, very good flywheel, nice flywheel, great for the money. It's made by the same company that makes these. Um, but these coals will not work on the Briggs, I mean, on the uh, on the Dino cast flywheel that they bring in. That flywheel is designed for the stock OEM type coals. Um, these coals, as you notice, have four legs on it, and the flywheels that this ignition works on has two magnets side by side and they're different polarity and there's different ways you have to work the holders and stuff so that this coal reads the 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 magnetism like it needs to but it will not work on the on the brig i mean on the dyno 
cast style PVL fly wheel. A lot of people get that confused because this one says PVL, this one also says PVL, but that don't mean they work together. This one works with a specific style fly wheel. I actually said that right, specific. That's a rarity. But this ignition source, what makes it a little bit better to me far as like open outlaw modified style racing is this coil doesn't retard as the RPMs increase. Now, if y'all remember back to some of my other videos, you know, the first video I've done on the flywheels, and, and I've mentioned it several times throughout my other ones, that with the OEM ignition, you set it at 30 degrees, at 6,000 RPMs, it's backed up a number of degrees. At 7,000, it's backed up a little bit more. At 8,000, it's backed up more. The timing retards as the the RPMs increase with the engine with the OEM coils that come on these engines. That, that includes Honda, Predator, Clone, all of them. Um, with our flywheels, you know, you can, the ARC style flywheels for the stock coils, you can use the coil gap to kind of help time when and how much that engine retards at higher RPMs. It's a fine adjustment, but there is adjustment there. These coils, the PBL coils, do not retard when the engine is running. You set this at 30 degrees, at 10,000 RPMs, it's still at 30 degrees, it does not retard. That's the, you know, it's got the four legs, you know, two of the legs read the magnetism, and the other two fire it. It's gonna fire at the same time, every time, and it's not gonna retard. It gives a much more accurate spark also throughout the RPM range. But what makes it better, in my opinion, and from my dyno work, is, because it doesn't retard, you don't have to run as much ignition timing to begin with. You know, typically on these open outlaw engines, we're running anywhere from 34, 36, sometimes 38 degrees. Most time I'm at the 36, 37 degrees, depending on what I'm doing. Bigger carburetors need a little more advance because when you get up to the 8,000 RPM range, the coil has backed up and you don't have as much advanced timing. You know, if you're at 36 static, at 8,000, you could be backed up to, you know, 30 or 32. It differs with each coil. Some coils retard more than others. But with this one, you don't need as much advanced timing because it doesn't retard. So typically we set them for modified open style engines. Um, but the, this coil works with the Hemi also. This works with, you know, I'm finna go over what engines we make it for, but this works with the Hemi also. This works with any engine just about used in carding. We have flywheels or brackets so that they'll work on it. I'll get to that in just a second. But um, I just forgot where I was at. You set this you know, in, in the 34 to 35 range, it doesn't retard at, at the upper RPMs, therefore you can run a little, a little, a little better, rich, uh, richer mixture up top and make a little more top end power. These really show the benefits through the mid range and the upper RPM uh, power because it doesn't retard and you can tune the carburetor a little bit better, especially with methanol, and get a little more top end power if you know how to tune it. But the timing differences from these coils to the stock coils are, are a good bit different because I run this ignition on my GX390, the, the uh, open GX390 that I run in the Unlimited All-Stars. I'm running 34 degrees um, because you know I've got a very large carburetor on it. It's running a lot of fuel and it, it benefits it on top ends. I can run a little richer mixture. Now, that same engine, if I was running an OEM type ignition, I'd be up around probably 36, if not 38, to get the same type of performance that I'm running with this. But that higher uh, timing on bottom end is a little rougher on the, on the, on the, uh, on the rod bearing and the crankshaft. It, it, it hammers it a little bit more at low RPMs and going up through the RPM range. This is a little bit easier on the bottom end because you're not running as much timing. Um, is it a whole lot easier? No. Is it going to make your engine last longer? No. It's just these little things here and there, you know, help the engine run better or help the engine maybe last a little bit longer. Not guaranteeing, but maybe. Um, just because you're not running so much advanced timing. Um, now, these differ a lot in the way you set up the timing. Now, like in some of my other videos, um, well, here's I'm gonna go over the flywheel, putting it on stuff like this. This is a, this is the ultralight 
the PBL flywheel for the Honda or clone engines, the part number 6600. Um, we have this also for the non-Hemi Predator, which would be a 6600P. So this is basically a modified 6602 that we make for the, you know, the standard ignition, but this was PBL. And these flywheels have to be a specific size in order for this coil to work properly. Um, that's why we can't make a three horse diameter in it because this coil will not work the way it's supposed to work if the flywheel is any smaller or any larger than this diameter. It's a, people, people call us all the time, I want a three horse diameter PBL flywheel. We, we can't do it. We can do it, but it's not gonna work properly with this coil. So they have to be size specific in order for the coil to work properly. Now, this same engine I had in the last video, it's just a standard short block. Still got the marks on top of the piston while I was doing my piston to valve clearance. But um, these flywheels, when you buy them for the Honda clone or the Predator, will come with a coil bracket so that you can adapt the coil to the engine. It comes with the bracket and both the bolts. Pretty self-explanatory on how it works. You get two large head bolts, two small head bolts. The larger head bolts go in the large hole. They're countersunk, because that's the one that bolts it to the block. And you will turn the coil facing the flywheel, or the bracket facing the flywheel. But um, setting these up, shooting them with a degree wheel and stuff like that is a little bit different than the OEM coils because you know this is supposedly some type of digital system. Um, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Gotcha. Now you don't run as much coil gap with these as you would um, on the uh, standard OEM ignition. You know, the OEM for stockers, you know, we're in the 60 to 70 range. Plates, we're in the 70 to 80 range. This one, you're typically gonna run around 40 to 45 thousandths all the time. That's pretty much all you're gonna need with this. Because if you get outside of that, I've, I've noticed, you know, a little bit of inconsistency when you get up to around the 60, 70 mark. So typically, you know, you're gonna run 40 to 45 thousandths. That's all you need. Now, I'm not gonna feeler gauge this, I told you, so y'all just go with that. All right, when you get this flywheel, not only does it come with a coil bracket to help bolt it on, but it comes with this paperwork right here that explains the firing point of where it fires to set the flywheel with a degree wheel. Now, I'm assuming that we've already got our degree wheel set up, we've already got our dial indicator on top, we found top dead zero, We've zeroed out our degree wheel. Now we're fixing to time the flywheel according to the paperwork. Now, like I say, this thing has four. I'm gonna drop this off on my. It has four posts on it: two small ones and two big ones. Now, as you see in the paperwork here, the firing line for this, just like with the 6619, you know, the 6619 is gonna be the uh, leading edge of the magnet with the right hand edge of the coil. This one doesn't fire that way. This one fires, like I say, they got two magnets on them. You're gonna use the trailing edge of the second magnet, which is right here. The trailing edge of the second magnet, as the engine turns, which is right here, the trailing edge, with the right hand edge of the second coil leg. Now if you see, you got four coal legs. One, two, three, and four. You're gonna use the right hand edge of the second leg, which is the one that bolts to the engine. That's the firing point. You're gonna line it up. I don't know if y'all gonna be able to see this or not, but probably just gonna have to take my word for the paperwork and all. But yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it. Anyway, here in the illustration it shows you the trailing edge of the second magnet 
with the right hand edge of the second coil leg as no this will not work with a 6619 the only coil the only flywheel that this coil will work with is a specific pbl ignition coil with the two magnets side by side as i said at first it will not work with a 6619 25 98 96 88 42 it's only specific flywheels and i'll go over which ones they are in just a minute but that's setting it up static now there's some people you know that wants to, sh to shoot the flywheel with a light to look at the, the uh timing marks on it you can find you can shoot this with a light just like you do with any other flywheel but this flywheel must be spinning at least 1500 rpms for the timing marks to be correct any slower than that this coil has a mechanism in it that retards the timing at low rpms to help the engine crank the lower timing starts easier and then at 1500 rpms it, it goes up to its normal timing and stays there up to 12,000. very confusing for a lot of people because they get these flywheels they put them on they read our directions or they don't read our directions sometimes they don't have directions in it david and taylor but uh they'll take it and they'll spin it with a drill just like they do their 6619 and look at where it's firing at it's not going to fire in the right spot this must be spun a minimum of 1500 rpms and very few drills out there spin 1500 rpms that's why we always send out the paperwork so that you can set it up statically without having to use a light because the light will confuse it, it confused me the first time i used it i'm like you know these people say it fires here and now i'm seeing it's firing in another spot because i wasn't spinning it fast enough but um just go by the paperwork it's very you know easy to understand refer back to this video whatever but trailing edge of the second magnet with the right hand edge of the second coil leg as the flywheel rotates is your firing mark every time all the time from 1500 rpms to 10,000 rpms it's going to fire there every single time there is no retard over 1500 rpms now like i said you know your coil gaps on these are going to be from 40 to 45 thousandths that's all you're going to need you're not going to be able to tune this one with the coil gaps like you do the 66 19s 25s and our other model flywheels and you don't need as much timing advance you know if you're running gasoline these flywheels you know the 66 hundreds and the other ones i'm fixing to show you the non-adjustables come set at 29 degrees that standard timing for the animal pbl you know when it comes from the factory but that's also standard timing for most gas applications you're rarely going to get over 29 degrees maybe 30 if you're running you know some you know a, a higher modified race gas type application but nine out of ten times pump gas low grade gas you're going to be right out the box just like it comes at 29 degrees but our flywheels are set there but we're using a stock crankshaft here and back to some of my other videos these honda clone predator even Briggs flywheels, I mean crankshafts, they're not always set where they need to be. So that's why you need to follow the paperwork, you know, put your degree wheel on, mock it up, check the timing to make sure the crankshaft's in the area it's supposed to be. The flywheel, 99% of the time is going to be right where it needs to be, but we need to check it on the crankshaft because, like I say, if this crankshaft is two degrees advanced and you're expecting it to be 29 degrees and you throw regular pump gas in there, you got a chance of it running hot because the timing's not going to retard like it needs to and um you know it's, it's going to run hot you can't you can better figure out why so that's why i support it they always check it when you're using a stock uh crankshaft even if you're using one of our billet crankshafts which they're made in the same factory basically side by side always check it you know because you know even we make mistakes believe it or not david and taylor but um just don't go crazy on the time, man. These things work great. A lot of people mess up whenever they get these. You know, they say, oh, it's a digital coil, so it'll give me a hotter spark. No such thing as a hotter spark. Spark is spark. All these engines need is a good spark that sparks consistently. That's where these coils come in at. They fire the same time every time up to 12,000 <clears throat> 12, RPMs. And I don't drink Kool-Aid like other people. I drink man juice but um <laughs> I just forgot what the heck I was talking about 
Um, but they're going to fire every time, all the time. But they get these coils in, and they've been running, you know, modified gas or modified with methanol, running 36, 38 degrees, and they set these up the same way. And they, they call me back and say, hey, man, I put this, you know, this high-dollar coil and this more expensive flywheel on my engine, and it slowed down. I'm getting less power now. Slow down on the track, slow down on the dyno, and it's running hot. I'm like, back to timing up. Well, I've always been told that you got to run X amount of time with, with methanol. That's true with OEM coils. And, you know, then I'll explain it to them, you know, about um, what's going on with the coal and why you don't need that much time, and then it makes sense to them. Um, I thought our directions had it in there. I'm not sure. I've actually never read these, <laughs> so I, I really don't know what it says. You know, I call myself out on something. Y'all, that make y'all happy now? But uh, I'm a man. I don't read directions. I don't read instructions. You know, I don't read maps. You know, I just... I just go but uh yeah don't have to go extreme on the timing gasoline 2930 methanol 32 to 34 and that's all you're gonna need all right that's basic setup um i'll go over a few of these flywheels that we make for different engines and different numbers and holy crap with some questions uh i just kind of pick a couple out here yeah, I'm gonna go over GX390 flywheels also. Uh, now, I don't, as of right now, you, uh, Chuck, you was talking about the Hemi. As of right now, I think the only Hemi PBL flywheel we make is the 6600, which is this one. Uh, it'll be a 6600 PH. Uh, Dave and Taylor, here's your chance to redeem yourself. Get up here and put that part number up. 6600 PH, I believe, is the only one we make for the Hemi right now. Um, like I say, which is the ultra light version. Um, you know, you can you can run this one just like the 6602. Um, you can put the cooling fans on it. Um, but to be honest with you, we made some of these flywheels, the 6600s, which are made for the. Um, uh, the animal, the gas animal engine, and they don't run cooling fans on them. They run gasoline, and they they run normal temperatures. These flywheels, believe it or not, create enough wind with this wagon wheel design to keep the engine cool if everything is tuned right. But with the 6600s here for the clone, the Honda 6600P for the non-hemi Predator and 6600PH for the hemi Predator, you can run the cooling fans on it. And these flywheels are capable of running, you know, starter nut, or you can put the recoil starter on it, you know, for the your stock appearing type classes. Yeah, you know, everything fits right on, nut goes on, yada yada yada, holds your cooling fans on. And Charlie Hamilton, this is actually your starter cup off your engine. It was in the shop, so I just grabbed it. It's famous now. But uh, like I said, we have the 6600 PBL ignition flywheel. For the Honda clones, non-hemi predators, the standard weight version is a 6621. Now, this one we make just uh, 6621. We make just for the Honda clones, or the 6621P, which is for the non-hemi predator. We do not make a hemi version in this one yet. Um, but this is just a standard, standard replacement. Um, it comes with a coil bracket. All these flywheels for the PBL will come with a coil bracket so you can move your coil down. This is a non-adjustable. Um, this one is set at 29 degrees, but there again, you need to check it. Um, the standard setup for gasoline will work in eight out of 10 setups, 29 degrees, 45,000 coil gap, you're good to go. Now, for those of you, like I say, dual magnet setup, a must for the PBL ignition. Now, a lot of people say this looks like a 6619. Um, dang, all the flywheels I brought home, I ain't got one in here either. This is a little bit smaller than the 6619. Like I say, these flywheels are size specific in order for that coil to work right. Um, so the 6619s, the 26s, the 25s, the 6689s, they will not work with the PVL ignition. Um, and for those of you that want an adjustable. Guess who? 
Say what's happening. Are you naked? Do you have on any clothes? You're naked here on live TV. Uh, uh. <laughs> you look naked to me. No, I'm not. Hop up here. Talk to me for a second. <laughs> Tell her about, see, he does have on clothes. Tell everybody, hey. You gonna tell everybody not not joke tonight? Not not. Who's there? Interrupting cow. You told interrupting cow last week. You got that be you. Be you. Do the be you. Do the be you. No no. Who's there? P. P who? P you you. P you you stink. That's a good one. You been doing different a different not not joke every video now. You gotta learn another by the next one. Okay, good job. Uh, you wanna take that pen with you? Now you just had a bath, so don't write on yourself, okay? No, I gotta have that, baby. That's my wrench. Gotta have that. Is that all you got to say? Yeah, yeah. Are you done? Yeah. You gonna know I gotta have that paperwork too. That's got, that's got daddy's part numbers on. He's using a cheat sheet tonight for the first time ever. I got to. <laughs> okay, see, that's the list of all of our PBO <laughs> flywheels. That's why I had to use a cheat sheet. We got a lot of them. I gotta have this, buddy. You can write on it. All right, sign it for me. Autograph it. <laughs> write two Bocephus <laughs> and then sign your name. Good job. Now we gotta take a selfie together, okay? Now what? All right. You autographed it. Now we gotta take a selfie. Look at the camera. Smile. All right. <laughs> Took his edge. <laughs> All right. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he's getting less and less camera shy, which is a bad thing. You're going to take over my show for too much longer. Like I said before, he actually gets noticed in public more than I do sometimes. <laughs> you know, we was, uh, me and him was somewhere here a while back, here locally, and uh, he had on his minion hat, which he had on a couple of videos before, and people that's friends with me on Facebook said, hey, that's, you're that guy, hey, that's that boy that's in the videos there. So, yeah, he's getting noticed more than I do. This is a better show than the Real Housewives of Albany. Randy, you don't want to know about the Real Housewives of Albany. Son, they, they some bad girls up there. Uh, no, that's not Jack and Coke, that's Yingling. You don't want, you don't want to get me on liquor. Um, my little man syndrome comes out pretty bad when I get on liquor, so they won't let me drink liquor. They just make me stick to beer. But anyway, all right, um, Sure. Oh, I got this shirt uh, this past weekend up at Dogwood. Um, I actually bought a t-shirt for the first time in my life. Yeah. You know. Um, pretty cool looking shirt. I got landing a couple of them too. But uh, anyway. Alright, uh, as I was saying, for those of you that want adjustable timing, we make the 6617. This flywheel here like I say, it looks like a 6618, but it's not. PVL ignition, dual magnets. If it does not have the dual magnets, it will not work with the PVL coil. I cannot say that enough. I get phone call after phone call after phone call. These people buy PVL ignition coil from us, and they're, these coils are 90 bucks. I mean, they're not cheap. They're $90 coils, and then they'll order a PVL flywheel from Dino Cams. Great flywheel, does its job for the price. It's a really good piece. But it's not set up to run off the PBL ignition. And then they call me back and say, hey man, it's cool. You, you sold me is, is junk. It won't work. We get to talking, find out what the problem is, and yada yada. So I can't stress it enough. Unless it's got the dual magnet set up, it is... You're watching me and a baseball game at the same time. Bless you, brother. <laughs> watching one boring thing and another. <laughs> you got double trouble tonight. But uh, the 6617, like I say, it looks like an 18, but they're size specific. Uh, adjustable hub. Just the timing basically on the fly. At the racetrack, on the dyno, most of my engines, you know, whether it's a PVL ignition or a standard ignition, they go to my dyno with an adjustable flywheel on it so I can adjust the timing on the dyno, get it set where I want it, and then put the standard flywheel on it at the timing that this flywheel tells me. But this flywheel can be used on a couple of different engines. It can be used on, uh, of course, the Honda, the clone, 
We got a non-hemi predator hub for it. This can be used on the GX390, the 340, the 420, or the 460. This is what I run on my 460 right here. All you gotta do is change the hub out, tell us what you want, what engine is going on. We'll put the hub in it, send it to you, or if you've already got a 6617 dual magnets, if we make a hub for it, we'll send it to you. These work on fly, uh, flatheads also. Actually, this is the 6617 for the flathead. Um, that's what the PV ignition was originally designed for, for us. The first ones we done were for the flathead. Now, of course, we made animal flywheels, but the animal was already designed for the PVL in the later stages, the generation four. And yeah, that's right, the animal had several different generations. You got generation one, two, and three. Generation one and two came with a standard type ignition coil. Then generation three came out and it had the PVL and so did the four to five. You know, I hear all the time about, oh, the clones had so many changes, yada, yada. Well, the animal did too back in the day. For those of y'all that wasn't around when the animal first come out, it had rule changes just like the clone did now. The clone's settling down just like we told everybody it would. The racing's great. The engines are durable. They're getting better. The animal had the same problems. It's a good engine. Clone had its problems. Now it's a good engine. Totally off topic, but I've always wanted to say that. So this one's made for the flathead. And I honestly forgot one of the most important flywheels I wanted to bring. We've got a what's called a drag racing version. It's a 6615. All these are online, take these numbers, look them up, you can, you can see them, but it's a finless design that the 6615, just like the 17, without the fins, works on the flathead. We got a hub for the Honda clone, the non-Hemi Predator, the GX390, um, and that's it for this model. But it goes on several different engines. All we got to do is change the hub. And for all you animal guys out there, we make the 6600A. And this is a much different looking flywheel than the 6600 for the clone. Maybe I can get this off. Maybe I didn't type it on there too high. You have to combine baseball equipment with carting when things don't go right. Yeah, that's one of them nights where you go to a fight and a race breaks out. <laughs> All right, the 6600 for the clone looks a lot like the 6602s. You know, side by side, unless you really measure them, it's hard to tell the difference other than the magnets. Of course, the 6602 has a solid magnet in it. These have two. All right, the 6600 for the animal looks a good bit different. The webbing is deeper. The backside is flat. The 6600 is a little concave, but it's a 6600A. Now we make two different versions for the animal. The 6600A um, is for an animal with an animal crankshaft in it, um, because the timing marks are different on the on the overhead valve crankshafts than they are on the flathead. Now, when you put a flathead crank in an animal or one of our billet stroker cranks, um, you have to change the flywheel and run a different flywheel if you want to use the key. Um, because you got a flathead crank that the timing marks are straight up and down, and then you got an overhead valve which the cylinder is leaned, it's got two different timing marks on it. So, if you're running a standard animal crankshaft in your animal engine, the 6600A is the flywheel you'll need. If you're running a stroker animal, which is a flathead crank or our billet stroker crank, you'll need the 6600SA, which stands for stroker animal. Um, you can use one to the other, but you'll have to, you know, you set it up with a degree wheel and not use a key, lap it in, lock it down. If you're using a key, a lot of people do, nothing wrong with it. I do sometimes, most time I don't, but you know, if your timing is set and you want 29 degrees, Put it on with a key, but standard animals are 6600A for animal, broker animals are 6600SA. Now, like I said, we make the 6600, the 6615, which is the drag version of the 17, this finless design. You know, we also make a standard animal replacement PBL flywheel. Uh, it'll be using my cheat sheet, as you know. I don't, there's a lot of numbers to remember here. The 6616. Is for you know your standard animal replacement flywheel. If you've got it because you know the animal comes with a a fairly nice you know cast aluminum style flywheel that's uh, that is pretty durable. 
Um, but if for some reason, you know, you want an adjustable flywheel on it, the 6616 is just a standard animal replacement flywheel. Um, then there again, if you want a fin flywheel, you know, full size adjustable flywheel for your stroker animal, you'll use a 6606 SAP. A lot of numbers to remember, it's no big deal. All you gotta do is go to our website, go up top to the search box and say, animal stroker PBL flywheel. It's gonna pull it up. Um, you, know, you want animal stroker ultralight flywheel, it's gonna pull it up. Or just pick up the phone, 1-800-521-3560 and talk to any of us and you know, we can get you what you're needing. Um, but like I said, we make a whole bunch of different PVL flywheels for several different engines and, and you know, the, the PVL ignition, especially on these modified big engines, you know, like my 390, junior dragsters, it's, it, it really is big in the junior dragsters, you know, and it actually one of the, our junior dragster uh, dealers is the one that, you know, recommend me doing this video for y'all because he gets a lot of calls on it. All these shops get a lot of calls on it and they answer them incorrectly, but sometimes the calls and emails kind of overload so they can refer the video to people, you know, for, for answering their questions about it. But, um, you know, the PBL is really big in the junior dragster and I, what I wanted to do, I've got some block zillas and all the shop. I just ain't had time to put nothing together. I was going to put a full billet, you know, flathead engine together and bring it in here, but I just ain't had time. Um, but does that flywheel cool the engine? This is actually the flywheel that we made for the pro gas animal class. Not sure if they run on road courses or circle track, but this one was the first of the animal PBLs ultralights that we made, the 6600A. This flywheel set at 29 degrees, just like any of the non-adjustable flywheels are set at 29 degrees. They run this flywheel just like this and don't have no heating problems. Now, it runs a little hotter. You know, normally they're trying to run the engines four to fourteen. It might run four twenty, four twenty-five. Um, but like I say, the fans on these are pretty deep. You know, and they they um they move a lot more air than you think they do. They move it efficiently. You know, it's not like it's just you know a lot of drag on there. There's little drag on it, but it's moving enough air to keep the engine cool. Um, as long as the timing is set right. You get too high a timing, no fans are gonna keep it cool. Um, our adjustable flywheels, most of the time when you get an adjustable flywheel for any engine, it's gonna come set at, you know, standard timing. You know, whatever timing is for that engine. That's where the first line is on here. That's gonna be your standard timing mark. Whatever, for whatever engine you're putting it on, that's 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 what you go off of. But there again, that's why you always set the degree wheel up, use the paperwork with your you know magnets and your coil leg, and see where the timing is on your engine, no matter where that hub is set. Um, that way, you know you got it set where you want it. Same thing with the non-adjustables. Look at Taylor coming up here and throwing some part numbers up here. I'm gonna let you use the big broom tomorrow to sweep the shop, buddy, not the small one. <laughs> John, we got him for the 390, buddy. Um, like I say, the 6615-H3 is the drag design, the defendless design. Um, the 6617-H3 is, you know, the fin design. You know, the 15, the 6615 and the 17, both are adjustable flywheels. One's got fins, the other one doesn't. Um, both of them will come with whatever coil bracket or coil adjustments that you need. Um, just like this one, this one here for the animal. You know, even though it's going on an animal engine, which the animal engine came with the PBL ignition, the offset on this flywheel is a little bit different, so it comes with some shims to shim the coil out. And just, you know, to get the, the balance right and get everything right on a flywheel, we had to move it out, you know, to, to beef it up in the middle to make everything work right. But it comes with whatever you need. But, yes, we got them for the 390. Um, just call us up and let you know what you need. Cody Stevens is in the house. Dang, Taylor putting up a bunch of numbers tonight. Look at him. 
no the pbl coil ignition does not have a resistor built in it that i'm aware of um like the uh the clone stuff does um not that i'm aware of that's what makes it a whole lot more accurate i need some monster energy girls behind me um don't think my wife would you know like that too much just say it you will see a monster then <laughs> with a lot of energy <laughs> funny funny go braves nobody watches the reds man uh also i'm glad chris wallace brought this up um this pbl ignition is not akra legal it's not a akra legal it's not nka legal i believe there's some classes in the mars series this out west that you can run them in it's not wka legal it's not legal in any stock class outside of the mars series and i think there's some classes out there that you might can run them but akra nka and wka these coils are not legal they're not legal i repeat again they're not legal do not go get these coals, put them on your engine and say, oh, Jody said they're legal. They're going to laugh at you like I'm fixing to. Ha <laughs> ha, they're not legal. Um, but set up right, retuning the carb, yes, there's an advantage to them. Um, I've actually put some on some AKR engines just to find out. You know, I've had some BP builder prepared engines that I put them on. Um, but the AKRA stuff, it takes a, a, a little different carb setup than what we're normally building. Um, took me a while to figure it out, um, but you know I found some pretty good top end power with it. Um, so there's an advantage, but they are not legal. So don't try it. Try it. There's some advantage to it. Just don't get caught. All right. Uh, yeah, Regis, he's a very big boy. He's only four years old and he's over 50 pounds already. Um, he's gonna be. He's gonna be a big one. Which is good. We're always needing good linebackers down in Tallahassee. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, we got a Canadian here tonight. How you doing? Glad to have you. Um, 420 Hemi. Alcohol class. I don't know nothing about no alcohol. All right. But, um... 420 Hemi. Um, if you want to run a PBL ignition, that's completely up to you, depending on you know gas or methanol. Um, the 6617 is probably going to be your best all around. I mean, you know, because it's got cooling fans on it, a lot smaller and a heck of a lot louder than a standard 420 flywheel. I think them suckers weigh like eight pounds, and this thing weighs 3.8, you know, 3.9, right at four pounds. Um, smaller diameter you get cooling fans you get you know timing hubs um that's what i run on my 390. i like it a lot now i can it's easy to set up yeah my alcohol is in that cup unlike some people that do shows on thursday night i'm not afraid to admit what i'm drinking <laughs> i'll hear about that tomorrow but uh yeah, I don't, I don't drink. I don't drink Kool Aid. <laughs> I drink real stuff. Of course, what y'all don't know is he's really drinking beer in there. He just calls it Kool Aid. He just ain't man enough to admit it. <laughs> Does a lighter flywheel show more power on the dyno? Yes. Um, a lighter flywheel is going to show more power on just about every type of engine you put it on. You know, outside of the really small plates like the reds and the greens. Um, I've got some engines out west, actually in the Mars series. Their rules state SFI billet flywheel doesn't give a specific size or weight, so we put ultralight flywheels on you know purple and blue plates, and they will accelerate. I'm talking almost as probably some of them accelerate better than unrestricted because of the way we do the carburetors, they accelerate great. Um, now the one problem with putting really light flywheels on low horsepower engines is uh backing off the throttle um they accelerate quicker 
but they also deaccelerate quicker, which can be a problem on tracks, you know, medium sized tracks where you're running 16 or bigger drivers, um, I'll say 15 or bigger, where you can't hold it wide all the way around where you just kind of, kind of burp the throttle. Those ultralight flywheels can hurt the stock type engine. Now modifieds, lighter is better. I don't care what anybody says, I've got a stack of sheets this big with dyno engines out there with heavy flywheels and light flywheels. A light one's gonna beat it every single time if everything is set up right. Um, like I say, to me, it's hard to beat this setup right here on a 390. Now, we do make the little small three-horse flywheels for the 390. Uh, it'll be a 6603 or 6607 fin or non-fin adjustable flywheel. Um, it'll come, you know, you got a coil bracket and all you got to get, um, but they're really small. The problem with running super, super light flywheels on high compression engines like junior drag engines or the big 390 engines you got to idle them up higher to keep them running um, that high compression with that small lightweight flywheel the flywheels actually help keeping it running it's like your um like the old tractors you used to see like you know, at the farm shows and what your granddad had my granddad great granddad still got one um they were small long stroke engines with this huge flywheel and just sit there and just pop every every 30 seconds. You know, wind down and pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. That's because the flywheel was keeping the engine running because it was so big. And um, when you get the high compression engine and put a really small lightweight flywheel on it, you know, the compression's kind of overtaking the, the inertia of the flywheel. So you have to idle it up the 3,000 or so to keep the engine running. Um, but once they're running and accelerating, you know, the compression's going to take over and, and is going to accelerate a whole lot quicker without light flywheel on it. Um, also, John has got a point there where a lighter flywheel is going to create more harmonics. Not necessarily vibrations, but harmonics. Harmonics is just ultra fine vibrations that's caused by flex and things rubbing together that go through the engine. These heavier flywheels, or what I call medium weight flywheels, are going to absorb those harmonics a little bit better and keep everything running smoother unlike one of these that's why these ultralight flywheels if you notice on our website it says they're recommended for a balanced assembly whether that be our billet crankshafts you know that are balanced a certain piston size or you have some of these other guys that balance stock crankshafts um you know jason rankin first name that comes to mind you know, using one of his balance crankshafts, you know, you can use these ultralight flywheels on those cranks because they're balanced. You can also use them on regular stock cranks, but you're going to feel a little bit more of the harmonic vibrations that I'm talking about with an unbalanced assembly than you would with a balanced assembly. But the heavier ones, you know, the, the three and a half, four pounders, they're light enough to give you better acceleration and they got enough mass on them to help with harmonics. And yes, harmonics hurt an engine. Um, yeah, Taylor. Well, Taylor's on it tonight. He ain't gonna sweep the floor at all tomorrow now, son. He's been on it. The 6603s and the, the 6607s, the three horses I was talking about, they're not PBL, they're for standard ignition. Um, but we do make them, but they're just for standard ignition. But anyway, um, just completely <laughs> thanks taylor yeah brad harmonics harmonics do hurt engines um that's harmonics at a certain extent you get in vibrations through the crankshaft it's like taking a a tuning fork you know and hitting it and that, that vibration is what you hear the metal vibrate that's harmonics um and you get this part which is made of steel harmonic you know, having the harmonic vibrations then you get this part you know the connecting rod which is aluminum which have different style of harmonic vibrations. When they run together, it can create drag. And harmonics, they, they hurt the performance of an engine, you know, especially at higher RPMs. How does the 6689 compare to the 6619? Ain't no comparison. The 6689 is gonna make more power on anything you put it on. Um, and it has more power potential than any flywheel out there. Not only does it have our, you know, 
state-of-the-art, one-of-a-kind magnets in them that have the ability to use coal height, you know, to tune the engine. But the lower drag design um, is just going to free up more power on top end. Like I say, these fans here are kind of like a 6619. You know, we've had these fans for a long time. I don't even know what I've done with the flywheel off this engine from last week. It's around here somewhere. Um, I get in trouble for bringing parts home and not taking them back. Um, sorry, David. But uh, the, the different fan design on the 6689 is going to give you less air drag on top end. Um, I covered this in one of my other videos, but you take a 6619, you get it set up to your AKRA engine, you get it tuned on the dyno the best it can do. You take tape and put on the blower housing so that less air can get in. What happens to your numbers? The numbers go up because there's not as much air going across the flywheel, therefore these, these boat paddles are not in the water. If you take a boat paddle, put it sideways, try to pull it, you feel resistance. You turn the boat paddle sideways, it zips right through the water. Same thing with fin designs. Certain fin designs are designed to move air efficiently with less drag, and then you got fin designs that's designed for just less drag. That's what the 89 is, designed for just less drag. It still moves enough air to cool the engine, you don't have to run tape on it, but like with plate engines, they don't run hot anyway if they're set up right. So you get the 89 on it, you got less fin drag to begin with, then you put tape on it, you got even less fin drag, and it makes more power. The 89 will make more power in anything you put it on. It has more potential than anything out there. I've got I've got so much dyno work on the 89 that we had that flywheel out for, I run it for a year. Um, on the track and I had other people run it on the track at local events. I didn't want to get caught with it. You know, most tracks don't really check flywheels. They just see it's a built flywheel and go on. But having the case to where I go in a race somewhere and they happen to look at it and like, this isn't an approved flywheel. I didn't want to get thrown out for it. But I run it for a year on the track and a lot of dyno testing on it until we settled. We had like seven different designs that kind of come back to that one um throughout all of last year before we released it i talked about it in some of my videos never showed it but i just talked about it and um but i got tons of data on that flywheel how do you control harmonic vibrations in a single cylinder engine you don't you cannot completely balance a single cylinder engine you're going to have harmonic vibrations in them you can balance the shaft and the assembly and all to where it rolls on your little thing and never stops and is completely balanced outside the engine you put it inside the engine because the crankshaft and all is so wide you got so much space in between your two bearings you know because you got a crankshaft that rides here and then the other support is right here all this in the middle there's nothing support when them rpms get to going <coughs> that crankshaft is flexing in the middle looking like bird wings like that right here you cannot stop it I don't care what material you make a crankshaft out of, you can make materials, uh, the crankshaft out of material so hard that you can about break it with your hand, it's so brittle. The crankshafts have to be strong enough to bend. That's an old saying. But the more the more RPMs you do, the more it's gonna flex there. And that's, you got a flywheel on one side that's helping the balance because it's zero balance. And on this side, you've got a clutch that's pulling in one direction. So that crankshaft not only is flexing in the middle, but the side with the clutch on it is being pulled back. So it's taking that crankshaft and doing it like that. All that flex in there doesn't throw the crank out of balance per se, but it creates harmonics. Now balancing the shaft so that it doesn't shake to begin with greatly reduces that, but you cannot keep harmonics out of a single cylinder engine, period. Have we thought about making a flywheel for lawnmower pulleys we make flywheels for lawnmowers, but I think you're talking about a pulley that goes on top. Um, we've had some calls on that. I don't know whatever become of that. Some guy was going to get us to make something one time and it never, never came through. I mean, we'll make anything you want. Um, there's going to be a minimum you know, purchase on them, but we can make anything you want. I got a long one here. Let's see what's going on here. 
I run a Briggs & Stratton V-Twin. It has an aluminum adjustable flywheel. We've been told to put the stock cast on for safety reasons. If it's one of our billet aluminum flywheels, you're never going to spin that flywheel fast enough to, to worry about. Our flywheels are tested at 12,500 RPMs. You know, some of them, actually some of them are higher than that. And a cast flywheel is designed to be turned 3,600 RPMs. I don't care what anybody tells you. There's pictures all over the internet. There's videos all over the internet of cast iron flywheels blowing up. And a V-twin cast iron flywheel weighs 15 pounds, 18 pounds. Them things come apart. It don't stick into people. It takes legs off. Um, but... I'm assuming you're talking about, since it's an adjustable flywheel, Gary, that it's one of our adjustable flywheels. If they're telling you to put the cast armor back on for safety, yeah, they kind of, um, kind of bass backwards there. Tractor pull, tractor pullers. Um, like I said, we can make anything you want. We've done some stuff for these tractor pull guys, and um, but we can make anything you want, but there'll be a minimum order on most everything. Um, just give us a call at the shop uh eight hundred five five two one three five six zero and you know talk to hunter or myself and you know we can find out something for you you know if you're looking to get something made yeah gary no doubt uh you need another tech guy um unless it's an you know some off some aluminum flywheel to come off some other engine but if it's an adjustable flywheel um it's, it's more than likely one of ours and you know it's sfi certified you know and uh but uh let's see oh oh no what i do oh there we go uh no we're not gonna make a three horse power diam or ultra light flywheel uh I and mean, we've got these that weigh less than two pounds they're like 1.7 um you know I'm assuming you're talking about it. I mean, you know, we got the three horse flywheels now. I mean, I know you know that. I'm uh, assuming you're talking about making one like we do for the uh, Junior Dragster, the finless design. You know, it's just a solid piece. It's a three horse diameter. And it weighs, I want to say like two pounds. Um, but uh, I don't think we're gonna make one of those for anything outside of the Junior Dragster because we've never had a real uh, nobody really wanting any like that. But there again. For the money, the minimum purchase will make anything you want. Oh, I'm trying to type and cheer too. That's funny. All right. Well, kind of think I hit everything on a you know in a nutshell tonight. Um, any questions about the setup? You know about the way it. Like I say, the, the instructions that we give are pretty self-explanatory. Um, but, you know, uh, people like myself included, you know, we learn better by actually seeing it. You know, so, you know, I hope I covered everything well for y'all. Um, you know, there again, you know, the PBL ignition, it has its place. You know, it's not, not recommended for just any type of, you know, application. Um, but it can be used in any application, but it's got to be used a little bit differently than than the OEM type coils um, because of the timing advance or the, the lack of timing advance. And if you're going to shoot a light at it, nothing wrong with it. Just make sure you're turning at least 1500 RPMs so that the coil doesn't go into startup mode, which it does retard at startup mode, which is below 1500 RPM. So you can't spin it with a drill. Um, just go by the sheets. That's the firing line. It's been tested thousands and thousands and thousands of times, and that's where it fires at. Um, I've got videos on it to show you that I needed to upload a while back. I can't, did you shut the door, buddy? Blue uh, layer. Why do you got blue marker all over you now? You just got out of the bathtub. Come here. Show everybody your hands. Laser. This is what happens when a Smurf gets smart with you. You slap the color off of him. Ain't that right? Wave it, everybody. Don't, don't knock my phone over. All right. The right hand is that way. Yeah, the right hand is that way. That's your left hand, baby. This is your right hand. Oh. Right here. 
You're trying to steal my Allen wrenches. <laughs> You're trying to be slick, ain't you? All right, tell everybody bye. Bye. Say, we'll see y'all next week. See y'all next week. Say, I'll have a new joke for you. I have a new joke. You gonna tell them one more time? You gonna tell them one more time or not? Not. Not? Okay. All right, well, are you done? Yeah. All right, tell everybody bye. Boys wear. Boys wear. Bow ties. Bow ties. Boys wear bow ties. Girls wear. Bow. They wear bows in their hair. That's right. Uh huh. Unless your name is David Simpson. Then you wear bows in your hair and a bow tie. And probably one around your waist, too. I know he's not watching that. That's why I'm talking about him. David's the guy that works with On your belly. On my belly? There's my belly. Look at your belly. You got a taco belly. Look at that. Da, 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 Look at da. that. Look at that belly. That's a taco belly. Yeah, that's my wrench. All right. Uh, oh, we got to get down. Daddy's losing viewers because you're... <laughs> we got dead air here. All right. <laughs> What is that right there? <laughs> what is that right there? Taco Belly. Yeah. All right, tell everybody bye. 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 You can take the paper now. I've I've used my cheat sheet. You can take it. No. Right, bye. Bye. You got your soccer ball. Bye. Handful and a half there. And he hits his mom in the head with the ball. Soccer's not good for me. Okay. All right. So I guess y'all got that. That boys wear bow ties. And girls wear bows in their hair. All right. Let's see. No, I don't grab Dad's cup. That's why I moved it. Y'all saw me move it. He's been to grab it. He's been known to grab and take a big swallow. And he don't grab my cups too much anymore because he, I'll admit, he actually took a swallow one night and spit it out everywhere. And um, I had soda in there and he just, He's never drank soda before. He thought it was like acid water or something. It was not beer. It was soda. He's never had a soda except that one time. Okay. All right. I have not done a clutch video um, because we don't do clutch work. Um, I sold all my stuff a while back and haven't bought any more. Um, I use other people for clutch work. Um, we sell clutches, you know, we sell Tomar clutches. I can get about any clutch you need, uh, but I'm probably not going to do a clutch video, you know, because I don't, I, we don't work on that much anymore, so, um, I just, you know, I got clutch people that I use, but, uh, anyway, um, PVL flywheel in a nutshell, went over all the flywheels that we sell, everything is online. You got any, any, you want to look at any flywheels or see if we make one for your engine, just go to the search box at the top of the page up there above the ARC logo. I don't know why I just pointed up <laughs> the ARC logo. Above the ARC logo and type in whatever engine you're wanting to do, you know, flathead PVL flywheel, it'll pull it up. You know, 390 PVL flywheel, Predator, Hemi, whatever engine you're thinking about, type it in with the letters PVL and it'll pull up anything we make for it if we make it for it. Um, that's true with anything on our website. Whatever you're looking for, just type in the description. I'm looking for, you know, uh, 212 cylinder head, you know, 212 block, looking for a coil, looking for a rocker arm. Type in the description of what you're looking for, and 99% of the time it's going to pull up that part and the related parts that go with it. You know, stroke or crane, looking for a, you know, a hemi rod, whatever. Just, it's our, our, Website is almost foolproof. Like I said, you type in what you want, it pulls it up. It's so easy that David Simpson can use it. Um, it's that easy. So, you know, scan the website, look for stuff. If you got any questions about anything, uh, phone numbers on the website, 800-521-3560. You can get me through Facebook here, um, through the ARC site, uh, Jody at ARC Racing, my personal website, um, customer service at ARC Racing. Um, catch me on forums every now and then. But just, you got any questions about anything? Just, we're very available and very easy to get a hold of most of the time. Okay, he's really naked this time. He took his, he took his underwear off, and 
So I'm going to try to keep him out of here because I don't, I don't need no nudity on my show. Because um, his butt's like so white, it like reflects light. He's 100% Irish in that area and he's very, very white. Um, but anyway, um, I'll get some ideas and brainstorm about another show. Um, should be the next couple, three weeks or whatever. Um, I'm getting to where I got a little more time to do them. Um, also, um, for those of you who haven't checked it out or looked at it or heard about it, um, my Georgia UAS series, um, we've had three races so far. The series is going very, very well. We've had a lot of interest. We've averaged 12 to 15 carts for every show. We've got guaranteed money to win. Um, the website is Georgia Unlimited All Stars on Facebook. Check it out. Like the page um, because the bigger it grows, the more money we can put in it. Hopefully next year we can get you know more prize money, bigger tri prize money, better giveaways. Um, but you know the full schedule's on there. If it's at a track near you, go check it out. We got I think three more races remaining this year. I'll try to schedule them out so that they're not on top of one another because it takes a little while for these UAS carts to to you know go over them from race to race. But anyway, Georgia Unlimited All Stars, check it out, and we'll uh, you know you'll. Uh, pigmentation harmonics <laughs> okay so my son's got a pigmentation harmonic disorder on his backside because it's so white i call it irish um you know or or uh mr mcwhitey um because his backside is white the rest of him he tans pretty well but of course he don't run around naked outside so adjustable flywheel with an advanced key um not really sure why you'd want to run an adjustable flywheel with advanced key because that's why you got an adjustable flywheel so you don't have to use an advanced key if you're having to use an advanced key to get your timing where you need it you've either got the wrong center hub um or you're doing something way outside the box because these flywheels have a have 14 degrees of advance that you can run them up and if they're set at the stop timing when you get it, that's 14 degrees over, you know, what the stop timing usually is, which stop timing on most engines is like 23, 24 degrees. So um, that's a lot of timing. But if you have to run an advanced key in it, you do it just like you would anything else. You know, you take the stop key out, put your advanced key in it with the advanced, whichever way you want it, um, lap, the, you know, lap the flywheel first, Put your key in, clean everything up, rotate the flywheel toward the advancement, tighten it down. Same thing. Then, when it's set up on the first mark or whatever, use your degree wheel and set the timing. Do not rely on, okay, it comes to stock timing, it's supposed to be 24 degrees, I'm going to go three lines, and that's supposed to be yada yada. Always check your timing. If, you, if you're going to call yourself a builder, you've got to check stuff like this. That is just like um clearancing you know piston to head clearance like i've done the last video if you're going to call yourself a builder you've got to check this kind of stuff you've got to know torque specs you've got to know clearances you know you've got to know these small little things that make a big difference down the road so if you're going to be a builder have that name by you you've got to check timing on every flywheel you put on do not rely on the keys because even the keys not all of them are cut exactly right you know some of them if you get a two degree key, it might be a two and a half degree key, it might be a one and three quarter degree key, you know, and then you throw in the misalignment from the crankshaft and you're three and a half degrees off. I'll always check them. How many RPMs are your flywheels safe at? You will not turn a four cycle engine enough RPMs for a long enough time to worry about any of our flywheels. They're all tested 12,500 RPMs for a very long time. Um, What is it with cat in boxes? I put a box on the floor and the cat's got to get in it. I don't get it. But uh, yeah, they're they're safe at any RPMs you want to turn them. Like I said, they're tested at all. You know, the SFI rating on them is twelve five. You know, and I just got my finger stuck in this flywheel. <laughs> oh, crap. <clears throat> anyway, um, should not have to worry about that. Especially you're the lawnmower guy. Yeah, you'll never turn one hard enough to worry about anything. 
But like I say, the SFI rating on them is all 12.5 and above, so you should be good there. But back to the adjustable thing, you just you do it like you do anything else. Uh, no, you use the timing light. Uh, if you watch the very first video I done, which has been a little over three years ago, I done on flywheel setup. Um, it's on YouTube. All these videos that I do, the one tonight will be um, uh, will be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow. So every video I've ever done is on our YouTube page. It's ARC Racing on YouTube, and um, it. The very first one I've done is called Flywheel Timing and something. It's, um, I was a lot heavier, but I was about 20 pounds heavier than what I am now. But uh, it uh, it talks about and shows you shooting the flywheel with a timing light to what you when you shoot the flywheel. You know you can. There's two ways you can shoot with a timing light. You shoot the uh, degree wheel to see where the actual degree is, or you shine it directly at the fly at the flywheel. At the coal, well, oh, hang on, I have a flywheel on here. You'll shine it directly, you know, in this area right here. Um, you're looking at the coal, and you're seeing the magnets when the fly, when the when the uh, coal fires, where the magnets are in relation to the coal. And like I say, with the the OEM style coals, um, you're going to see the leading edge of the magnet, right hand edge of the coal. The PBL ignition. You're going to see the trailing edge of the second magnet with, you see, you can't even see the magnets there. They're still underneath it. The trailing edge of the second magnet with the right-hand edge of the coal egg as it rotates. Um, that's the point of shining the light at the coal is to see where it fires at. Now, with these PVL ignitions, they're all going to fire the same. They're going to fire exactly there every time from 1,500 degrees to 10, 1,500 RPMs to 10,000 RPMs. Now, the OEM-type coals, like I said in that video, because those coils are, they're made in China, and they're designed to be run at 3,600 RPMs all day, you'll see some slight variances from, you know, from this coil to the next. But it's not going to be no five degrees. I mean, you, I think the most I've seen in one is a little over one and a half degrees, and that's just one. Most of them are going to fire within a degree of each other, or within a certain amount of each other. But you know, with those the 6619s and the 25s with the OEM coil, if you just line up the leading edge of the magnet with the right hand edge of the coil and the leading edge of the magnet, if you notice those flywheels have gray putty lines on them. The leading edge is the first gray putty line as the engines rotate. When that gray putty line comes out from underneath that coal, stop right here. That's the firing line. Wherever you want the engine to fire at 32, 34, 36 degrees, that's the mark. You set your degree wheel there and, and that's where the timing will be. But no, they're they're not coming up no four degrees difference, no sir. But anyway, uh, do we have any more questions? Anyway, uh go back through, I think I missed one. Mini cup cars. Mini cup cars are cool. Um, if it's coming up four, to, if you see a difference in four degrees, how fast are you? I mean, how fast are you spinning the engine? Are you spinning it with with the engine running, or are you doing it with a drill, or what else? Because even the OEM coals, you need to spin them, you know, at least fifteen hundred RPMs to make sure that you know it's firing where it needs to. Um, if you're getting four degrees difference, something something's wrong somewhere. Are you using one of our flywheels or the stock flywheel? Because I can kind of see, you know, a a stock flywheel moving around because the magnets on those things are very very weak, and they're inconsistent. You can get you measure, you know, the magnets on those are just a big square, and you can measure on one side of it and get a different reading than you can on the other side of it, and vice versa. Um, but uh. Now, if it's one of our flywheels, you got something's wrong with your 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 uh, your ignition system or something. Um, never had a four degree variance. Oh, just you're just now joining, so I got to go over this all again. No, I'm just kidding. Now this PBL ignition, uh, we have it for several different engines. Um, 
Honda clone Predator 390 flathead there in a nutshell anyway um Well, that just about does it for another edition, edition, audition, whatever you want to call it. I think I'm going to go finish off my <clears throat> Kool-Aid, probably have another one or two, and then go to bed because I'm tired. I've got a long weekend ahead of me. I got... I got a family thing to do this weekend. I'll be with, um, most people call them their in-laws. I call them my outlaws, be my wife's family. Because when we get together, um, we do some outlawish things. <laughs> Usually the law is called on us. But, um, don't run with magnets on it. Run off a, huh. Oh, you're running a, uh, MSD type ignition. Anyway. That throws the fly with a lot of balance for taking the magnets out of them like that. But, um, anyway. Uh, thank y'all for stopping by. I uh, hope I answered a few questions anyway. Kind of cleared some stuff up about the PVL ignitions. You know, and just PVL specific flywheels and why they are like they are and why they won't work with other systems and why OEM coils won't work on these systems. Um, they're a good system, very, very accurate. Um, they got power potential, take a little different setup. Um, any other questions y'all got, like I say, you know, call, call me at the shop, 800-521-3560. And, um, you know, we can help you any way we can. Uh, this video will be loaded up to YouTube tomorrow along with all of our other ones on YouTube, ARC Racing on YouTube, or they're still on this page. You know, they're just kind of hard to find on the on the Facebook page. A lot easier to find on YouTube. And um, appreciate you stopping by, and we'll see y'all again in a couple, three weeks, hopefully. Um, another reminder, we've got the Big O race coming up. Uh, I believe it's in South Carolina again. It's the first weekend in August. One of the best shows of the year. If y'all like modified racing, if y'all have never seen open flathead racing, I highly recommend y'all go to this race. It's a one-of-a-kind race. I wish they'd done more of them. I've tried to get other series and tracks to do it. It's just hard to get people to, to do that all the time. Those engines will have a lot of maintenance on them. But the Big O, South Carolina, be sure to check it out. A lot of videos on YouTube. It's best to see it in person because there's no sound in the world like 30 open flathead modifies on the racetrack. Um, first weekend in August. But until then, uh, we'll see y'all again in a few weeks. Thanks for stopping by and y'all have a good night. Thank you.